It's time for another round of high-end Dollar Tree DIYs that don't look like Dollar Tree DIYs. Let's get started. Hi friend, welcome back. Very excited for today's Dollar Tree DIYs. I actually got a ton of inspiration from this book right here. Maybe you've seen it, maybe you have it. If you don't, I definitely recommend it. I'll link it below, but look at this beautiful space. Isn't this amazing? Such a beautiful living space, very mid-century, couple transitional pieces. I really love it. I actually got a ton of inspiration from these interiors for today's project. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. I don't know if it's just my local Dollar Tree, but it seems like the craft section is getting bigger and bigger. There are a lot more wooden pieces and I found this um, wooden plank board. Actually pretty thick. Also found this um, slat right here, 12 inch slats. I don't know if it's just me, but I love sniffing wood. It just smells so good. <sighs> so I'm gonna take these two things and create sort of a riser. And I feel like this is a simple way to bring in a wooden element to a space, whether it be like the bathroom, you can put your soaps on there, the kitchen, or maybe just like styling a coffee table. Let's see what we can do. Honestly, I don't know why they put the sticker on the nice side of the wood because it leaves like a sticky residue, but maybe I can get it off with some like goo gone or something. So it's smooth on one side, rough on the other. So I'm gonna take this outside and do a little bit of sanding and put this together. This one should be actually pretty easy. The texture's a little bit rough on some areas. So the first thing I'm gonna do is give it some light sanding. I went in with like 100 grit sandpaper and then finished it off with 220 grit sandpaper. This wood's actually pretty soft, so it's pretty easy to sand, I would say. Honestly, this wasn't really necessary, but I took out my orbital sander. By the way, this orbital sander is probably the cheapest one I found and it's gotten me through the past two years. I will definitely link it down below if you're looking for a budget sander. <laughs> This wood is so easy to cut, so I'm just using my handsaw to cut the little feet or I guess risers. Next, I'm just taking just some simple, common wood glue and applying it to the base. I didn't actually use any nails for this. I just used these clamps, hold it in place. So let's just wait for this to dry overnight or cure. Okay, it's the next day and this is where we're at. Isn't that pretty neat? It's also very simple to do like 250 plus the stain, which we'll get to in a moment. But I feel like this would be a really good gift. Pair it with like a soap and maybe um, some lotion. Okay, at this point, I'm just gonna go ahead and stain it, but let's head on outside, get some fresh air while we do that. Honestly, any color will do. I'm just going through my stain stash and I came across this. This is Java by General Finishes, which I really love this color. So I'm going to just apply one coat. This stuff does get a little bit dark. And I feel like since this wood hasn't been stained before, it really absorbs it, as you can see here. What's great about this is I can just wipe off any extra um, and just get that desired look. And that's a wrap for this project. Again, very simple. Now, once that dries, I probably should apply a clear protective coat, but that's pretty much it. Let's take a look at the final result. But first, let me show you something from Dollar Tree that I found that I think you're gonna love. So I got a couple more of these. I don't know if I've shared these before, but these are ribbed glass candle holders. I guess a little tea light or votives in the candle section, but they look like crystal for some reason. Like they look like really good quality. But if you flip them over, you can also put candlesticks, which they also sell at Dollar Tree. That looks nice. Or honestly, do you ever see like those aesthetic Pinterest photos of like beautiful table settings outside in nature, like in the summertime or even like the fall or something? You have these like beautiful tea lights and make it so romantic. Do that. Do that this weekend. Get a couple of these. <laughs> So this is actually from Dollar Tree. I think it's some sort of like fabric for like the kitchen, like for flour or something. I don't really know. I don't know what I'm talking about, but this was from Dollar Tree. It's fabric, right? I'm gonna take this and I'm gonna take some of these plastic planters and I'm going to make them look like vintage distressed large pots. But the goal is for them to not look cheap. All right, to be honest with you, for this one, I'm a little conflicted. It's honestly just personal preference. I'm not sure if I should just like do individual or 
if I should group them together and create this stacked look, kind of create like a larger piece. Honestly, I feel like it's personal preference, but the technique should be the same thing. We're just gonna need some cloth and some cement. Yes, cement. This wouldn't be a DIY video without some cement. Let's elevate these plastic planters from Dollar Tree. You know what's great about Dollar Tree? They have a lot of different planters, but they look like plastic and they look cheap. So here's a simple way that we're gonna make it look a little bit more high end. First things first, I wanna glue these two together. I think that looks kind of nice. So I'm using some Gorilla Glue and some hot glue to hold it into place while that other one cures. Now let's get to the good part, the cement. I'm using cement all today. But first, I want to take my fabric here and cut it into small squares. I think this is going to make it easier to work with, especially since we're dealing with sort of these like smaller scale pots. Mixing together some cement and some water and kind of creating like a runny, maybe pancake consistency or kind of like thick paint. Now I'm dipping in my fabric squares, getting them nice and wet and just kind of putting them onto the planters. It actually does stick, but you kind of just have to press on them as you're seeing here. I will say you could probably use any fabric and get an old t-shirt, cut it up, but really what's important here is that the fabric is thin. The final piece goes on and honestly i'm not too worried about perfection right now i just want to make sure that the entire visible plastic is covered now I can definitely layer it up with fabric and kind of create a thicker look um, of course letting each coat dry but in this case i'm just going to stick to one layer now we patiently wait for this to dry for a couple hours or overnight uh excuse me look at this isn't that pretty neat it actually feels like one solid piece, it doesn't feel cheap. One thing I'm gonna do now is I'm just gonna lightly sand this. So I'm gonna take this outside, sand it, add another layer, but without the fabric, I'm just going to kind of create like a thick paint consistency just to layer it up and make it um, a little bit more sturdy. Honestly, I'm not too concerned with getting rid of all of that high texture. I just wanna knock off sort of any rough areas. Now I am mixing up another batch of cement with some water here. Again, thick paint consistency. And I'm just gonna take an old brush and brush the entire thing. I will say I ended up painting sort of the inside of these as well. I did not wanna see any of that blue plastic, but I will say these are gonna be used more as decorative. I'm not actually going to plant directly inside of these per se because of the whole thing with the pH balance and cement and plants, I don't know, you get it. Because the cement kind of absorbs this next layer that I'm adding, keeping it wet really helps making sure that it's nice and smooth. Yes, I quickly learned that wetting down the cement really helps make sure it goes on smoothly, but it's totally personal preference. If I don't wet it, it'll just be a little bit more textured. But that pretty much does it for this project. Again, you can take this in so many different directions, maybe paint it, stain it, but here's the final result. Okay, honestly not bad for a Dollar Tree DIY. Well, technically the cement is not from Dollar Tree, but I feel like it's a relatively accessible material. It's not that expensive. You get a bag of cement and make a whole bunch of these, sell them, put them around your house. But let me know what your thoughts are on this project. And if you plan to make them, definitely tag me on Instagram. But I actually like the result of these. Can we have too many trinket dishes? I don't think so. So I actually found this shell dish at Dollar Tree. This was in like the home decor section. I think they're having like a, coastal moment right now they're selling a lot of coastal home decor so not bad for a dollar 25 it is plastic i just not the biggest fan of the color so i'm actually going to paint it so let's see what we can do with this honestly isn't this dish adorable i really like it it kind of looks like a real thing first thing they are going to do is spray paint it with some white paint i'm only going to spray paint the back side so i flipped it upside down here and gave it a coat i ended up not painting the inside because i don't know i kind of like the look that it created which you'll see here in a second i did go in with a little bit of like this darker beige color just to give it a light light off-white color 
I don't know if you can see, but it kind of has like a pearlescent, is that a word, pearlescent look. I did not paint the inside, just the bottom. So that's kind of how it creates the look. I think it's the plastic, it kind of has that look. So at this point, I feel like it's pretty solid now, but I'm gonna take it up a notch and I'm gonna go get, I think some rub and buff, go see what I have over there. And I'm gonna apply it around the border, the perimeter here, the rim, uh, just to give it a little bit of a whimsical look, but sometimes less is more. And in this case, I think this is a super easy DIY. I tried using rub and buff and my finger, but it just was not working for the edge. So I picked up some of this stuff. This is liquid uh, gold or just, yeah, I think liquid gold. I'll link it down below, but essentially you can just take a little brush and just freehand it around the perimeter here. I think it looks really nice and it kind of just makes it feel a little bit more elevated and whimsical. can envision this as being sort of a catch-all tray or maybe for some jewelry. Oh, that would look really pretty. Here's the final result. I feel like these sell out really fast at Dollar Tree. So these are glass vases or carafe. I think this could be great for water too. But like I said, they sell out really fast. So definitely stock up on these if you see them. With this, essentially, this could just be a great vase as is. Put some floors in there, put them on your you know, display or put them inside a vintage vessel or something. But I actually wanna transform this and make this look like ceramic. I don't know if it's just me, but this project's kind of nostalgic for me because of this 3D fabric paint. I remember when I was younger, I designed a t-shirt, very ugly by the way, but I really enjoyed that process and it actually held up great in the wash. But can we use this on glass? Well, I don't know. I went ahead and applied a couple of dots throughout the entire vase as you're seeing. The answer is yes, it will work on glass. You just need to let it dry for a few hours and then it's not coming off. Once that dried, I gave it a coat of this sort of satin bronze or antique bronze. Once that dried, I added a little bit of black acrylic paint with some water to give it an aged distressed look. Look at this patina. Look at that texture. It looks kind of like metal in a sense. It's so beautiful. It reminds me of like an old gilded frame. I am so clumsy. This is what happened as I was doing the final styling shots. I dropped it. I dropped it and it broke. And then I didn't even get to take one single photo of it like nice and it turned out so nice too which ugh, i don't have time to make another one so we're just gonna pretend we're just gonna disregard we're going to look away from the fact that it's broken here's the final result <laughs> Four Dollar Tree DIY projects that do not look like DIYs. At least I hope they don't. I mean, I don't know. Like I always say, it's amazing what one can do with a little bit of patience and a little bit of love. And I feel like these are totally doable. If you do recreate any of these, definitely tap me on Instagram. I love seeing what you're working on. But comment down below, let me know which of them was your favorite project. Thanks again so much for watching. Be sure to check out my Dollar Tree DIY playlist. I'll put it here at the end of the screen. Actually, my last video is pretty good. A lot of people really loving that wall art piece and a couple other great projects that I did there. But thanks again so much for watching and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.